When you work as an arranger, or indeed when you work in all sorts of fields, it's very important to be able to work to brief. And working to brief essentially means that you have an employer who gives you an instruction and you have to follow that instruction exactly. And this will be, you know, the case whether you're developing ads for people or you're writing in a database or you're arranging an a cappella song for choir. Over my years working with LCV, I've worked to brief a lot. And so I thought it might be interesting for you guys if I asked some of my artist friends to give me songs to arrange, uh, to give me a brief, and show you how you might approach arranging when you have an artist who has very specific needs for their arrangements. The first artist I'm going to be working with is Becky CJ. Now you might have heard of Becky CJ because she does this thing called Tinder Ballads on TikTok. So if you've seen those, that is Becky CJ. And I went to university with Becky, so we know each other a little bit uh, from before. And so I thought it would be nice to ask her if I could arrange one of her songs for choir. The song she asked me to arrange is called In Love With My Best Friend. So without any further ado, let's get started with arranging the song for choir according to Becky's specifications. Hello Becky, how are you today? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very excited that you've uh, allowed me to do an arrangement of your song. And I was uh, going to ask you, first of all, uh, what is this song about? Well, not that the title gives anything away, um, but <laughs> uh, it's about falling in love with my best friend. Um, and it's basically a summary of the feelings that I felt just before we'd confronted our relationship so mm -hmm. there was this very intense kind of couple of weeks before either of us had really said anything where it was very clear that our actions were indicating that we were moving towards something more emotional and romantic but the words hadn't quite been uttered yet we hadn't actually confronted the conversation we hadn't sat down and really even made each other aware of how we were feeling um, and I had become very aware that I was obviously falling in love with her. And um, it was kind of scary because she'd been my best friend for a number of years. And you never, the fear of thinking that if you confront it, you're going to lose that person. So yeah, it's, it's basically, hopefully, a little capsule of those emotions that I felt in those couple of weeks beforehand. Now, I've listened to the song, like I said, and I, I sent you some suggestions already, but I'll just mention that uh, because this is uh, a piano ballad that has uh, some backing vocals, but it is kind of the bulk of it is piano and voice. And so I thought what would be nice would be uh, to make it a cappella. The only thing that I feel like is really pivotal to the emotion of the song is in my version where the BBs come in on the uh, second pre-chorus that she's like, mm -hmm. this one according. Um, I just think that basic kind of um, like rousing emotion of having things coming in and it being this like um, immediate impactful thing. I wouldn't want to lose that in the arrangement. Um, and it's just how we balance that with there already being a cappella voices up until that point. So making mm. sure that the um, that that moment isn't lost, basically. But Becky, you've been working as a songwriter for a few years, uh, haven't you? Already, have you released any music that people might want to check out? Um, yeah, so I've got quite a um, back catalogue on uh, line, so you can check it all out on wherever you stream or buy your music. Um, and it's all just under Becky CJ. Um, mm. And the most recent release, I released a single actually um, last week called Losing Your Perspective. I released an EP uh, around two or three months ago, a uh, four track EP. I basically, I wrote all of these songs and it was a very emotional period. And for me, writing music is like therapy, as kind of cliche as that sound. But <laughs> for me, that's the way I'm kind of expressing and dealing with my emotions. So I just have had this kind of back catalogue of music that is very specifically about this one event. Um, and yeah, so that's all available to listen to. Yeah, I'm excited to be doing yeah. it and uh, it'll be a fun, <laughs> it'll be a fun song to, to work on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
yeah, and thank you. <laughs> The first step is always to get as familiar with the song as possible, so do this however you prefer. Listening to it over and over and learning it by ear is also a good way to do this if you prefer working this way. So I've now transcribed, transcribed the melody and I've also filled in the chord symbols in this extra um, piano stuff I put at the bottom. Now there's not actually going to be a piano in the recording but I just I like to put these in just as a placeholder so I can put in roughly what the harmony is with chord symbols and the bass note. Um, but this might of course change because obviously this is for archipelago choir and things operate a little bit differently with voices. So I've not really put in too much stuff it's basically just the melody I've tried to capture the um, the timing, the phrasing as well as possible. And uh, you see I've not really written anything in no dynamics, no no choir parts. And this is just so I get used to the song. And so I start thinking. And when you do this, you will often start to get ideas. And you might want to write some stuff in. Um, you know, anything you do at this stage is basically just temporary. You know, you could end up changing the key. I'm not going to change the key because I want it to be same key as the original because it's you know, Becky chose this key for a reason, so I want to make sure that it stays in the key that she's used to. But yeah, just capturing very kind of um, the, the most important parts, uh, which in this case would be the melody and the harmony-ish. But of course this, you know, I can always change, so that's not a problem. Um, in the original, it's mostly just piano and voices, um, with the BVs coming in here, pre-chorus 2, you have very clear like ooze happening in the original. And so what I did here, I, was, I just wrote plus ooze. Just to remind myself, this is where Becky chose to add in the backing vocals. And so I can then do something here. I can um, maybe step it up a notch with um, with the choral parts, um, just like something to create like a change. In this chorus is where the BBs do block lyrics. And so that that's kind of, that's a detail that I think is quite important to to capture and to reflect in your arrangements. So I just wrote plus block lyrics here, just to make sure that this is this is important. Got to make sure I capture that. Then no BVs. Now, obviously, you know it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be choir parts throughout because it's an a cappella arrangement. But what I can do here is, and then I can step back. I can simplify the parts. Maybe just have them on long notes, something that doesn't take a lot of attention to kind of reflect that change in the original. But yeah, there isn't really that much else to say. It's just, it's the melody, it's the chords, and there's a few notes I made. But this is a song that kind of lends itself quite well to a choral treatment. And there's like quite a lot of space to do things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to have a stab at arranging it. You know, use my, <laughs> my best judgment. And then I'll send it off to Becky to listen to. And then she'll tell me if she wants any changes. And... Uh, you know, I'll make those. And then when she's happy, I'll then go over what I've done. And I'll also see if I can get, um, when people record their, their choral parts, the, the choruses that is, I'll put those in so you can then hear what the different sections will sound like in isolation. What you're seeing is the sped up footage of me arranging the song. I'll talk about the finished arrangements in a minute but I sent it off to Becky to see if she wanted any changes and she was happy with the first version I did, which was very nice. So let's have a look at what I did and how the choral parts will sound. The singers are me, Matt, Therese and Lily. And big thanks to those guys for recording the parts for the song. So to start, it is very simple. It's just mmms. And in this case, I've just rendered it as mmm. You could also write it as closed mouth or whatever, but I just chose to. Mm. And I write in the breaths usually, which I've done. And I'm just following the original harmony here. There is no, no surprises, nothing surprising. Um, this is for the first verse, just very simple block harmonies. Mm.
Once we get into pre-chorus one is when I decide to add in some um, more rhythms. And again, it's very simple. It's just on each beat. It's roughly what happens in the piano. Um, and yeah, I've rendered this as staccatos with um, with slurs. This is something you will see in a lot of Baroque music for some reason. <laughs> and uh, it just means that they are, there's a sense of them being together and yet there's space. It's kind of, it's a bit superfluous, but it's basically something that's not quite staccato, but also not quite um, slurred. So if you just wrote them as, as um, crotchets or um, quarter notes, then people would probably be tempted to keep them entirely together. And with staccatos, you'd probably get them too uh, short. So this is kind of a bit more um, like duration. You could also write um, just like eighth notes or quavers, but I think this kind of looks, it just looks a bit nicer on the page. And again, there's nothing particularly controversial here. Mm -hmm. Chorus one, again, just going into ooze with a little bit of call and response. So, um, hit you with no warning, and then I preempt the then suddenly with then from the backing parts. And this is quite a nice thing to do. And uh, just um, tenor spaces, then alto sopranos on the next beat, just to get some motion by not having them on the same beat. Um, continues, ooh. And then I do actually do block harmonies in the first chorus. Now in the original, this doesn't happen until the second chorus, but you know, things are a little bit different when it comes to, <laughs> to archipelago arrangements. So I decided to just, you know what, let's do it here. It's a nice, nice line. Trying to open your eyes and then trying to work out why is just with ooze. Verse two, again, just like ooze with a little bit of response from the soprano part. Just something very simple. In love, very simple. Block harmonies, block harmonies always sound quite good, but I like to kind of space them out with um, having some ooing and then some block harmonies and then some ooing and some block harmonies. It just creates a bit of contrast, a bit of interest. Um, enough, same thing again, just new words, ooze and block harmonies going into the second pre-chorus. This I, I quite like to do. I try to get people in a higher range for their forte moments. And so I just do that by stepping up. This is all just on a, an A flat chord, A flat dominant rather with this G flat here. And just uh, have the soprano step up um, inversion wise, if you will. And then we end up on uh, B flat minor on R's. And R's are also a little bit better for strong um, passages because they just naturally have more strong overtones than ooh. And again, just kind of having some following the harmony, um, just keeping things quite simple. <laughs> Going into chorus two is when I then start with more block harmony. So hit you with a warning and then respond from the choir. No warning. Again, this is just to create, um, just create some motion. Um, this is a really simple solution for having stuff happen when the melody is static. So like typically you want your counter melodies to happen when the melody is static. So this will be like a very simple counter melody. Going on again, just block harmonies, all in, trying to open your eyes. This is where the, the original had block harmonies, and so I just copy that, very simple. And it 
Christ here with no warning, no warning, suddenly aurora, trying to open your eyes, trying to work out why. In the original, the BVs dropped out in the bridge, so what I do is I have an open fourth or an open fifth if you <laughs> think of it in terms of the harmony it's a b flat minor but i just i kept the the, the minor third out i mean the, the melody does that anyway but this just creates a really spacious sound so open fourths open fifths very good for creating a spacious sound and again just following introducing parts one by one so it starts quiet um just the upper parts Adds in the tenor here, not too high. This is my big sticking point for me. Do not write the tenor too high and quiet. It's um, gonna sound tense and might end up not working. Uh, but in yeah, B flat should be fine. Quiet, and then R's going down to slightly stronger with the bass coming in, and then block harmonies going out of the bridge. Again, same thing. It's kind of nice to, to then step back, back into quiet, only two parts. And again, they're just kind of singing the harmony quietly, introducing tenor and R's. And this is like a big moment in the original as well. You're kind of building um, chords in every beat, building into the last chorus. So I just have then have them in a fairly high range. I think the soprano parts also in a range where they could sing this in chest voice. I'm kind of keeping the arrangement same in chorus two and three. Uh, I think it's okay to reuse your uh, the way you've arranged different sections and just maybe accounting for new words uh, because it means there's less <laughs> there's less material for the singers to learn. And ultimately, if it works uh, doing it once, you could probably do it twice. <laughs> At least that's uh, what I think. Okay, and then this song. Is maybe a bit unusual in that it finishes with another verse and so, and so i go back to to ums to coast mouth ums just following the harmony and again just long notes nothing special just leaving space there for the soloist um to shine and he started each of that said you you can only ever finish a song with, with two different dynamics either pianissimo or fortissimo anything else is wrong <laughs> which is perhaps um a little bit uh, of an exaggeration, but in this case, I thought it would be quite nice to just have them finish on a really, really quiet. Um, this will be a four chord, so G minor, um, G flat, major seven. Just leaving that space for the soloist to finish. <laughs> yeah, I think this is going to be a really nice recording. So I'm going to, and I'll probably, I've probably already shown some of the places with the recorded BBs. And the next thing will be to get our, everything mixed and uh, putting it out as a recording. Thanks for watching another episode of Choir with Knut. Uh, I hope you learned something. As I said in the beginning, when you work to brief, it's very important that you follow the brief. And this is this will be the case no matter what sort of field you're in, whether you're you know a website designer or you're a painter decorator who's redecorating a room. Uh, you got to make sure you follow the brief. I'll be putting out the finished version of In Love with My Best Friend in a few weeks' time. 
In the meantime, if you found the video uh, helpful, make sure you share it with your friends, uh, subscribe, ask me any questions you have in the comments, and I will see you in the next episode of Quiet with Knut. Uh...